to begin to understand the sun's extraordinary power and its changing cycles of activity, we need the help of one of the most dramatic events in the astronomical calendar, a total solar eclipse. November 2012, Cairns, Australia. In 48 hours, there's going to be a total eclipse, and people have come from across the globe to catch it. But this one's special, because it promises to reveal something crucial about what's going on with our sun. To get an eclipse, the moon must drift between the sun and the Earth. At what's called first contact, the moon begins to block it. But what's extraordinary is what happens when the sun is completely covered. That moment of totality reveals something that's normally hidden by the sun's glare, the sun's faint atmosphere, the corona. And it's the corona that's key to what this eclipse can tell us. We're very lucky. The Earth is the only planet in the solar system from where you can witness a total eclipse. Because although the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, it's also 400 times closer. So at a total eclipse, it appears to be exactly the same size. There's a total eclipse on average every 18 months, so they're not exactly rare, but catching one isn't easy. The narrow shadow paths they trace on the Earth's surface are far more likely to pass over uninhabited regions, such as the oceans, than a populated area like Cairns. And the timing of this eclipse is significant. Right now, we're due to be at solar maximum, the period of greatest activity in the sun cycle but each maximum is slightly different, so scientists need to confirm that we've actually reached it. Just click on that. Delivery. One way to confirm solar maximum is to study the sun's corona during totality. It's what makes this eclipse especially exciting even to the most hardened eclipse chasers. Astronomer Francisco Diego has seen 17 total eclipses. This time, he's advising a group of 100 British enthusiasts, but he's also brought his own equipment. A camera and some filters are all Francisco needs to take photographs of the corona. It's the shape of the corona in the photos that will show him if we're at solar maximum. The shape of the solar corona is uh, modulated by magnetic fields on the sun, which in turn are the consequence of an 11 year cycle. So this 11 year cycle of activity in the sun goes from very high activity, low activity, and then high again, and in that process, the shape of the solar corona is changing all the time. For example, when the corona is, uh, is uh, very round, that means the solar activity is at the maximum. You have a lot of myths and legends about the disappearance of the sun in the middle of the day. And still today, I think we have that fear. When you see that shadow coming, it comes at twice the speed of sun, very, very fast, and covers the whole landscape in a matter of a couple of minutes and it is terrifying, and we still feel that. I mean, you're operating your equipment, and you still feel that, that, that fear and that, uh, that anxiety of the sun disappearing in the middle of the day. So in a way, yes, uh, it will be one of the reasons that uh, we travel to those, uh, to those remote places to, uh, to witness and to uh, feel this, this, uh, this uh, very, very deep emotion, this link that we have uh, with, with nature, with natural phenomena. Francisco, will only have two minutes in which to get a successful picture of the corona. 5 a.m., the day of the eclipse. The sun is already rising. 
first contact is only 10 minutes away. Oh yeah. We're well on our way. The moon has begun to cover the sun. But the sun is so bright that there is no noticeable darkening of the daylight until much closer to totality. From now on, the, uh, there is something strange in the light. You see, the colors are fading. What do you think, Francisco? It's looking quite skinny now. It's quite skinny, yes. Yeah, about 10 minutes before totality. Yeah. So this is where things are going to happen faster and faster. The darkness is going to really uh, come much quicker. The moon has completely blocked the disk of the sun. A delicate halo is all that remains. It's the corona. Francisco now has two minutes and two seconds to get the photos he needs. Here it comes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That was great. The whole thing is over, and you are left with this image, as I have right now in, in, in my mind, the image of the solar corona there in that bit of the, of the landscape. It's very, very intense, very fast, and you want to relax and to feel that uh, what you just saw. But what do Francisco's photos show? Has the sun reached its peak of activity? Astronomer Francisco Diego is trying to determine what stage the sun is in in its 11-year cycle. This is Francisco's photograph of the corona at a past solar minimum. The corona has a vertical axis. It is ordered and calm. But this is his 2012 Australian eclipse photo. The corona goes out in all directions. It's the sun at its most active, solar maximum. <laughs> <laughs> 